Every political campaign wants to get inside your head. The more they know about you, the more they can influence you. I think people understand that data is power. As we play out our lives online, we're making things easy for them. It is possible to target messages at particular individuals who will be unaware of the fact that you've been profiling them. Are there people out there who know you better than you know yourself? This is not a normal company. It's using psychological techniques to change people's thoughts and behaviour. Was Britain's EU referendum hijacked by the American alt-right using a technique known as psychographics? Brexit was the petri dish for Trump. So they said, here's this company, can it help you? This is the charge levelled at an obscure data analytics firm called Cambridge Analytica. They now deny they ever worked on the Leave campaign, but it wasn't always thus. So is psychographics a menace or a myth? This is a complicated story involving politicians, financiers and companies on both sides of the Atlantic. It's also a story in which the main protagonists keep changing their story. And it raises troubling questions about whether in the age of big data, our democracy is open to manipulation. Cambridge Analytica is a data analytics company with offices in Washington, New York and London. There are numerous similar firms whose services are retained by political parties during elections around the world. But Cambridge Analytica's approach is different, according to its Eton-educated CEO, Alexander Nix. Psychographics. That is an understanding of your personality, because it's personality that drives behaviour, and behaviour that obviously influences how you vote. Our story begins in 2015 at a press conference for Leave.eu, one of the two main groups campaigning for Britain's exit from the European Union. One of the people on the platform is from Cambridge Analytica. But we're going to be running large-scale research throughout the nation to really understand why people are interested in staying in or out of the EU. And the answers to that will help inform our policy and our communications to make sure that we turn out more first-time voters, more unregistered voters, more apathetic voters than ever before. In February last year, Alexander Nix gave a progress update. He wrote in an article that Cambridge Analytica had, and I quote, already helped supercharge Leave.eu's social media campaign, and that the campaign's Facebook page was growing in support to the tune of about 3,000 people every day. Leave.eu was the UKIP-led campaign for Brexit, fronted by Aaron Banks and Nigel Farage. Cambridge Analytica is financially backed by Robert Mercer, an American computer scientist turned hedge fund billionaire. He also backed the alt-right news site Breitbart, which was headed by Steve Bannon, who was also on the board of Cambridge Analytica until he became Donald Trump's campaign director. Robert Mercer was a major contributor to Donald Trump's presidential campaign, which Cambridge Analytica also worked on. It was through this network of mutual acquaintances that Cambridge Analytica met the Leave campaign. At least, that's how a spokesman for Leave.eu told it to a reporter from the Observer newspaper. I went and had a coffee with Andy Wigmore of Leave.eu and he said it was just because Nigel uh, is a good friend of um, the, the Mercers, Robert Mercer, and, um, and of course knows Steve Bannon a long time and they were happy to help. It's all the same family. We were after the same ends. Political campaigning is strictly regulated. Whatever money you spend needs to be registered. And Leave.eu's spending returns make no mention of Cambridge Analytica. When Leave.eu were first challenged about this, they said, oh, well, they did some work for us, but they were just helping out and they didn't get paid. But that would be problematic too, because donations in kind have to be registered as well, and foreign donations are not allowed at all. In April, the Electoral Commission launched an investigation into Leave.eu's spending, including potentially impermissible donations, saying it had reasonable grounds to investigate whether the law had been broken. 
But now, in his first on-camera interview addressing this issue, Cambridge Analytica's CEO claims his company never, in fact, did any work on Brexit for any of the campaigns. Well, I'd like to think we've been pretty clear about this and consistently clear over the last uh, year or so that we had absolutely no involvement uh, in, in the Leave campaign. We did not do any paid or unpaid work for Brexit. Hmm. Why did you initially say you had? Well, actually, that was really just a, an example of the, the, the cart pulling the horse. Uh, we had a, a slightly overzealous um, PR advisor who, who released a, a press statement. You also um, had a colleague uh, uh, at the launch of uh, Leave.eu's campaign. That's uh, correct, yes. And, uh, but you were still saying that you weren't working for them and you didn't do any work for them? That's absolutely correct. No, we didn't. So what were you at all. doing there? Well, we were exploring the possibility of working with them uh, as we were with actually other parties at that time. Right. So what does Cambridge Analytica do? Well, essentially, it's all about targeting. It uses data to help politicians get the right Facebook ad, for example, to the right voters. Every political campaign uses these sorts of companies. But Cambridge Analytica claims to have something extra, a secret source. And that's where psychographics come in. Cambridge Analytica is uh, a behavioural science uh, and data analytics company that tries to synthesise both uh, psychology and uh, big data and predictive analytics to understand audiences, uh, both in the political space and the commercial and brand space, as well as the government space, um, such that it can uh, improve the efficacy of communications. Cambridge Analytica was formed in 2013 and is affiliated with a group of companies called SCL. SCL began developing a psychological component to marketing and messaging back in the early 1990s. Their work isn't confined to elections. SCL's website says their services have been used by the US State Department and NATO. This has led some to accuse Cambridge Analytica of using techniques known as PSYOPs, or psychological operations. This has come out of a background of 30 years of doing psychological operations all around the world. And when, when people talk about winning hearts and minds in Afghanistan, this is what they're talking about. It's using psychological techniques to change people's uh, thoughts and behaviour. Cambridge Analytica is sensitive to the charge that they're using military-grade psyops on elections in Western democracies. We train militaries all over the world in, in, in PSYOPs and, and, and our military division is, is very separate from our political division. In fact, uh, so much so it's, it's a different company, it's in a different building, it has a firewall between it, it's governed by a different board, it has its own security clearances. Um, so the, the, the only commonality between the two might be um, some key personnel and, and possibly some shareholders. Cambridge Analytica went on to work for the Trump campaign. At the time, they appeared to suggest that they were using psychographics, but they later clarified that they hadn't. Perhaps that's because when they did use psychographics on an earlier campaign, that of Senator Ted Cruz in his bid for the Republican nomination, it didn't really seem to work. What the company itself had promised to deliver and what they delivered uh, fell short. And so we were paying a premium for something that we thought was a strategic advantage in it turned out to be have no strategic value at all. I'd like to believe that, uh, that the theory works and that it could be put to good use, um, but you know, in the end it was just bullshit. Cambridge Analytica says psychographics is a legitimate and effective component of its methodology. Scientists have for years been working on models that combine personal data with psychological tests to better understand what messages will likely be effective. In the 1990s, Barry Gunter was one of a number of psychologists hired to help SCL with the science. This was two decades before Cambridge Analytica was formed, but even in those early days, there were concerns that the marketing of psychographics sometimes got ahead of itself. Our job, say mine and other psychologists, was really to make sure that the science was adhered to properly and that the claims were not too outlandish. And in the end, I'm afraid that's where we parted company because we couldn't reach an agreement on that. But psychographics isn't science fiction. It's all about targeting. Here's how it's supposed to work. People volunteer to take a psychological survey online. 
Their answers are then matched up with details about their personal lives, their shopping habits, what car they drive, what they post on social media. Put that together and it builds a psychological profile that can help the politicians hone their message. Eventually, once you've got the software and you've got the methodology which can accurately identify the markers of personality, then it is possible then to uh, target messages at particular individuals who will be unaware of the fact that you've been profiling them and that indeed you may well be able to find out things about them which they might not be consciously aware of themselves because they wouldn't think about the information they're providing publicly in, the, in that way. So it's a, there are very sophisticated systems of analysis which are being developed um, which in the future could potentially have powerful effects. And that's where some people get concerned. Could the stuff that we post on Facebook and other social media sites be used without our knowledge to bombard us with psychologically tailored political adverts? Last month, the Information Commissioner opened a formal investigation into the wider use of data analytics by a number of different providers in political campaigns. What we're looking at here and what the allegations have been about is um, mashing up, scraping, using large amounts of personal data, online data, to micro-target or, or personalize or segment the delivery of the messages without individuals' knowledge. I think the allegation is that fair practices and fair democracy is under threat if large data companies are processing data in ways that are invisible to the public. As part of their inquiries, both the Information Commissioner and the Electoral Commission are trying to establish whether Cambridge Analytica did, in fact, do any work on the Leave campaign. If, as the company now says, they did no work at all, then perhaps they are simply a victim of a tendency to talk up their own achievements. You said you were working on the EU referendum and then it turned out you weren't. Uh, you said you were using psychographics on the Trump campaign and then it turned out you weren't. Are you a con artist? Well, that's not a fair question. We've been absolutely consistent in saying that we did not work on the EU referendum. Uh, and uh, we've, we said this to you and to your colleagues repeatedly. We've made statements to that fact uh, over a nine or 12 month period. And we've also been consistent in saying that when we transferred our data analytics capability from the Cruz campaign across to the Trump campaign, there was only five minutes, uh, sorry, five months until polling and we didn't have time to employ the rigorous psychological approach that we'd used on, on the Cruz campaign. And our story hasn't changed. So the answer to your question is, of course, no. For some opponents of Brexit, the idea that the EU referendum was hijacked by alt-right hypnotists wielding high-tech psychological weaponry looks, perhaps, like a reasonable explanation. But the known facts don't quite support this theory. Perhaps this is simply a case of theatrics and overzealous PR. Perhaps. But it remains a story of contradictions and unanswered questions.